well-intentioned though they might be, these parental units come with a serious cringe factor. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 embarrassing parents in movies and TV. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at any and all embarrassing parents found throughout the world of television and film, and we'll be considering both individual parents and couples. Number 10. Mrs. George, Mean Girls as she likes to remind us herself, she's not a regular mom, she's a cool mom. Not like a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. <laughs> right, Regina? Please stop talking. Regina, however, would much rather her mom stay out of her room when she has her click over. In her small but memorable role, Amy Poehler steals the show by offering the teens mocktails before offering real booze on the condition that they drink it there, as well as condoms. You guys need anything? Some snacks? A condom? Let me know. Oh, God love you. She even coaches them on their Jingle Bell rock dance, but it's the moment where the dog she's carrying is desperately trying to chew on her breast that was the final straw for both viewers and her daughter, who promptly orders to go fix her hair. Tell me everything. What are you guys listening to? What's the cool jams? Mom, <laughs> could you go fix your hair? Okay. You girls keep me young. Oh, I love you so much. Number 9. Beverly and Murray Goldberg the Goldbergs. I'm home! The man parking his pants at the front door, that's my dad, Murray Goldberg. TV's mine! The ultimate embarrassing mom, Beverly loves her kids so much it hurts. And finally, my overbearing smother, Beverly Goldberg, a homemaker, a ball breaker, who found the time to stay fit, raise the kids, and drive us all insane. Ridiculously proud of them and their sometimes limited abilities, she won't stop getting involved in their lives, be it with their friends or just hyping them up to no end. Murray, on the other hand, believes adamantly that his wife smothers the kids way too much and isn't above plain insulting them if they do something dumb, frequently calling them morons. Unreal. Uh -huh. I raised a moron. Eccentricities and embarrassment aside, Beverly and Murray ultimately have good relationships with their three kids. Number 8. Bernard, Bernie, and Rosalind Roz Fokker. Meet the Fockers. I use real lemon juice. It's from our trees here, that's the secret. He was squeezing all afternoon. Yes, and Jack, I managed to make some lemon juice too. <laughs> <if you don't. laughs> Pam's ex-CIA father Jack was already embarrassing enough in Meet the Parents, obsessively trying to ruin his daughter's relationship. But Greg's hippie mom and dad are on a whole other level. Greg even convinces them to lie about their professions to appear more normal to Jack and Dina, getting Roz to pretend to be a yoga instructor when in actuality she's a sex therapist for elderly couples. Your body is talking to me. It's hungry for action. I can feel it. Unleash the beast inside you, Jack! If her handing out sex tips to Pam's parents wasn't bad enough, Greg's father Bernie reveals way too much about his son's sex life to his future in-laws. You're just in time to hear me tell the gang how you lost your virginity to Isabel. He was 19, a late bloomer. It is the definition of too much information. Number 7. Clark Griswold, The National Lampoon's Vacation Franchise In the first film, Clark Griswold decides on a whim to drive him and his family cross-country in an RV to go to an amusement park, only to discover that the park is closed for two weeks so their trip was a waste of time. The Griswold patriarch getting absolutely everything wrong is the running thread throughout the saga. Because it's cold out? Yes, yes. It is. It's a bit nipply out. I mean nippy out. <laughs> what am I saying? Nipple? <laughs> uh, there is a nip in the air, though. At Christmas, he can't talk to a pretty girl in a shop without freaking out, and when they go to Vegas, he gambles away almost all of their money. You brought us all here for a family vacation, and the only time we've spent together is when you're on your way in or out of the casino. I've invited you. Clark doesn't really need to do anything particular to embarrass his family. Just being himself is enough. Baruch Hallelujah. Clark, this is a serious matter. I'll do it myself. Number 6. Frank and Estelle Costanza, Seinfeld. Where am I going to sleep? What are you talking about? I can't sleep in there. Of course you can. I can't. I can't. George's parents are a constant source of embarrassment for him, especially when they're allowed to interact with others. Often called some of the most underrated minor characters in a sitcom, Frank and Estelle Costanza steal each and every scene in which they appear. But you see my point here? You only hear of a hen, a rooster, and a chicken. 
Something's missing. Something's missing, all right. At one dinner party with George's future in-laws, Frank can't understand how chicks are born, and Estelle doesn't know what Merlot is. Frank even co-invents a male bra with Kramer he likes to call a man's ear because of his feminine breasts. Oh my God. When they're not embarrassing George, they're embarrassing themselves. They're almost always bickering and seemingly can't stand each other. Number 5. Lois and Hal, Malcolm in the Middle You didn't get that promotion because I called your boss a fat ass at the Christmas party. I lost my wedding ring three years ago. This is part of a lawnmower. The domineering matriarch of the Wilkerson's, Lois is widely disliked by all the other characters and often takes an antagonistic role in the episodes. An ultimate control freak, it takes up all of her time trying to keep the boys in check, and she often submits them to unreasonable punishments. Do you remember what you did for your birthday last year? Nothing, I was grounded then too. And what about your birthday? You grounded me after I smashed Malcolm's face into the cake. By contrast, Father Hal is much more laid back and reserved only disciplining the kids when they actually deserve it. He always defers to Lois, however, and his natural awkwardness and subservient nature make him embarrassing in an entirely different sort of way. Number 4. Tobias and Lindsay Bluth Funke – Arrested Development An embarrassment to the entire family, including their daughter, the grossly mismatched Lindsay and Tobias were only married so that Lindsay could spite her parents, the equally embarrassing Lucille and George, the latter of whom goes to prison for embezzling, and the former who frequently mentions how much she dislikes her own son Job. I love all my children equally. I don't care for Job. Tobias and Lindsay aren't remotely affectionate towards each other and have few, if any, romantic moments, namely because of Tobias's ambiguous sexuality and Lindsay's general disinterest in him. Just so you know, I'm looking to get divorced. Are you interested? Yes. Embarrassingly for daughter maybe, Tobias calls his previous combined profession of being an analyst and therapist an analropist, while her mother frequently forgets she even exists. Hey, Mom. Hey, honey. Moo. Mm. Moo, honey. <laughs> Number three, Noah Levenstein, the American Pie franchise. Well, this is the this is the uh, female form, and uh, they have uh, focused on the breasts, uh, which are used uh, primarily to uh, feed young infants. Having a parent who's open and understanding about sex seems like a good thing, but for Jim, his father's lectures on girls and masturbation are definitely not welcome. And I have to admit, uh, you know, I uh, did a fair bit of masturbating when I was a little younger. I, uh, I used to call it the stroking the salami. For all the compromising situations Jim finds himself in, it's usually his father who walks in on him. Noah even helps his son cover up the mess he makes of the eponymous apple pie. We'll just tell your mother that, uh, that uh, we ate it all. Mr. Levenstein is the only character to appear in every movie, handing out sex tips to the various teens who come his way. But Jim's dad isn't the series' only embarrassing parent. Stifler's mom is ordered by Stifler to stay in her room during parties, though this does not stop her from repeatedly sleeping with Finch. Number 2. Homer Simpson, The Simpsons You're a little monkey, are you? Yes, sir. Bart, do that thing you do that's so cute. What? That thing you know how to do. What? Go to bed. A father figure more inconsistent than Homer Simpson is hard to find. His attitude towards his kids seemingly changes from one episode to the next, though more often than not, embarrassment is all but guaranteed, especially for Lisa. Look, I let you down and I apologize. I know that doesn't make it right, but I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. I forgive you. No, you didn't mean that! No, I didn't. At the very root of Homer's frequently embarrassing behavior is a persistent lack of foresight and self-awareness. He has ideas, he executes them, and then catastrophe of both the physical and social variety ensues. Thankfully, Lisa is one of the few people Homer will actually listen to when she calls him out for his behavior. You, huh? sir, are a baboon! <gasps> Me? Yes, you! Baboon, 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 baboon! Unfortunately, it's only a matter of time before he reoffends. Also, it'd be good if he would stop strangling Bart. Are you little shit! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. It's Leonard! Why is he calling? Sheldon's sick! Were you playing with him? <laughs> For God's sake, Mom, 26 years old! Excuse me, Mr. Grown Up! You want your colon clean? Fine, I'm gonna clean mine. Yeah, now my colon is clean. I'm totally squeaky clean. Do you know that the fruit keeps no. coming month after month? <laughs> 
He's got us in some kind of a cult. It's not a cult, Ma. It's a club. What do you mean, month after month? Number one, Frank Gallagher, shameless. Whether you're talking the UK version or the US version, he's one of the most, if not the most, irresponsible father in television history. Frank is also a lot more than just plain embarrassing to his kids. And with over half a dozen offspring that we know about, that's a lot of embarrassment to go around. What's the one thing we need? One word. One thing. Sterilization. Yeah. There are very few times throughout the episodes when he's sober enough to be capable of doing something helpful, let alone actually give his children advice. What could I do, Steve? I... Disappear I, for three weeks? I had a breakdown. You went on a banter! At the start of the show, they generally don't like him, and despite relations subsequently improving, he still never fully takes on responsibility as head of the family. Daddy! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.